today's book is The Monster Who Couldn't Scare Anyone. This monster wants to scare people, but instead of scaring people, he is scared of everything, even a toy dragon. But at last, he can scare the burglar to, to save the family's belongings. Let's read and find out what happens. The monster who couldn't scare anyone. In the dusty bedroom of a large empty house stood an old iron bed. Under the old iron bed there lived a monster. He was a very unhappy monster. He had nobody to scare. During the day he was stumped around the large empty house, making monster noises. Yoga! Yoga! But all the rooms were empty. There was no one to scare. At night, he would stomp through the weed-tangled garden, making eerie sounds. Yoga! Yoga! The owls and the bats took no notice. They weren't scared of monsters. One moonlight night, when an owl screeched, ooh, ooh, the monster ran to hide behind a large oak tree. He trembled from the top of his head to the tips of his toes. He was scared of owls. Then, fat, 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 a bat swept over the monster's head. The monster screamed and ran back to the large empty house. He was scared of bats. Next morning, the monster stared sadly through the dirty windows of the large empty house. Then, he saw a lorry pull up outside. People began unloading huge crates and furniture and curtains and lots and lots of toys. Later the day, as he peered over the banisters from the top landing, the monster spied a dad, a mom, a granny and a small boy. They were putting down rugs and filling the sitting room with furniture. At last, cried the monster, someone's scared. And he raced down the stairs, crying, Yoga, yoga! Look everyone, yelled the small boy, a monster! Go away, monster, tutted Granny. Can you see we're busy? That evening, the monster crept up behind Mom and Dad, who were sitting on the sofa, watching the television. Yoga, yoga! He cried. Come and watch this program, said Mom. It's very funny. The monster sat between Mom and Dad and watched the television. Mom and Dad laughed and laughed at the program. But the monster didn't find it funny at all. The program was all about monsters who were scaring people. What's so funny about that? Grumbled the monster as he slunk off to bed. But the monster's old iron bed had been removed. So he made his new home under the little boy's bed. During the night, the little boy woke up and began playing with his computer game under the bedclothes. The monster slid out from under the bed and stood and stared. Yoga, yoga, he grunted, startled the boy, leapt from his bed with a sheet still over his head. The monster fled, screaming, Help! Help! 
There's a ghost in that room! Early next morning, the monster plodded off to the kitchen to see if there was anything for breakfast. Granny was mopping the kitchen floor. Granny was so busy, she didn't see the monster standing there. Yoga, yoga, he shrieked. Arr! screamed Granny as she leapt into the air. Her wet mop landed on the monster's head, covering him in soap suds. Granny fell bottom first into her bucket as the soapy water flushed all over the kitchen floor. Granny was furious. Her very wet bottom was stuck in the bucket. Mom and Dad ran to help Granny as they struggled to pull the bucket from Granny's bottom. The monster crept away, feeling very ashamed. He'd made Granny jump, but she wasn't scared of him. Later, Dad decided to dig the weed tangle garden. He dug deep into the ground and scooped out a shovel full of mud. Someone was watching him. The monster rushed up behind Dad. He was about to shout, Yoga, Yoga, when Dad threw the mud over his shoulder. The mud hit the monster, spat, covering him from head to toe. Whoops, sorry, laughed Dad. As the mud spattered, tearful, Monster sat under the small boy's bed. Granny handed him a glass of milk and a piece of chocolate cake. Here, she said kindly, your lunch. The monster was surprised. Granny, Mom, and Dad, and the small boy felt sorry for the monster who couldn't scare anyone. They decided to make him one of the family. They decorated the inside of the cupboard under the stairs and gave him his own room. Wherever the family went, the monster went too. One day, they took him on a train ride into town. The carriage was full, and there was no seat for the monster. But he didn't mind. He sat in the luggage rack. They took him to a toy shop. All the children pointed and scared. Look! They giggled. A monster! None of them was scared, but the monster was scared. He didn't like the toy dragon. They took him to see a film about some witches. Everyone loved the film, but the monster thought it was far too scary. They even took him to a restaurant where they ate spaghetti, but as the tomato sauce dribbled down the monster's chin, he said, This is very nice. But it must stop. I have to scare people. That's my job. So that night, the monster hurtled around the kitchen, rattling pots and pans. He slammed cupboard doors and he bashed himself on the head with the lid from a biscuit tin. That will scare them, he said. But Mom and Dad were sound asleep. The little boy was sound asleep, and Granny was sound asleep and snoring loudly. Nobody had heard the monster. He hadn't scared any of them. The monster hurried into the sitting room to see what else he could rattle 
and bang and bash. But he got a terrible shock. Someone was loading a big sack with all the family's belongings. It was a burglar. The monster was very, very angry. Yoga, yoga! He shouted. The terrified burglar screamed, "A monster! Help!" He dropped his sack and scrambled through the window. The monster was very happy. "I can do it!" he said proudly. The monster quietly closed the window and tiptoed around the room, putting back all the belongings. He decided not to tell the family about the burglar. After all, he didn't want to scare them. The end.